Hey viewers, so this here is my very first uh, welt from Airsoft. Granted this is a uh, playing CQB, meaning it's an indoor arena, very close range. Like the person that shot me from this might have been only like 10 feet or 3 meters away. So it's understandable. It didn't hurt at all and I was wearing just a t-shirt so actually this was just bare skin contact. But it's very unappealing to look at, you know, this just happened yesterday. Uh, so I would recommend, if you're going to play airsoft, wear a full sleeve shirt so you don't end up looking like you have some weird skin condition. Doesn't hurt though, paintball hurts. Okay, so at that first game of mine yesterday, I rented a gun, and rental guns aren't very good. By the sixth game, the magazine stopped feeding ammunition, so that's when I decided to quit. And today I went and bought my new first gun of airsoft. I do want to give two shouts out to two channels that uh, talked about this this gun. One is called Gunfire, and the other is Evike. Uh, Evike, I think, is a U.S.-based website. Gunfire sounds like he's Russian or East European. I apologize if I don't know, but great reviews you guys have out there. And so, where I live, this is like probably the best gun I, I can get for the money. That's what I think. Um, based on those YouTube reviews and let's take a look so let's bear in mind that I'm completely new to airsoft I only played one day yesterday <laughs> and this is my first gun ever of airsoft quality I have a history I have real I've had real guns I've had paintball guns but airsoft this is new to me so uh, also very casual review there's no reason to do professional reviews for me, at least. YouTube doesn't pay me all, anything, really. Uh, just to give you an idea, I have over 1,200 videos on, on my channel, and I make about $40 a month in royalties. 1,200 videos, 40 bucks a month. It's not worth trying to make money off of YouTube. That, that day is long gone. I just do this for fun, you know, and it helps me learn about stuff. Uh, you know, looking at things and sharing them with others because other people comment and constantly teach me about stuff because I don't know Jack. All right, let's get into this thing. Uh, this thing is so big, I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it all in frame. I'm uh, literally standing over this this uh, counter now. So SpecNet Arms Edge 2.0. I guess this is the latest uh, technology from this this brand. I am not sure where this brand comes from. Let's see on the this uh, part of the box here, the little spine. Satisfying price. Yes, the price of this is pretty decent. Uh, don't ask me how much. It depends on where you live. You know, everyone has different exchange rates. Spectacular range of models. They do have a large list on their website. Supreme quality spring, spring quick change. That's the one of the selling features that got me onto this. And here's their website, specnarms.com. On the other spine, or on the end, some legal jargon. No, maybe not legal jargon. This is a sales jargon, sales pitch jargon. Here, I'll focus. You can pause and read that if you want. Here's the legal jargon. Don't put it in your mouth, don't shoot your eyeballs out, that kind of stuff. Maybe hazardous within 165 feet. All right. Don't use low-grade BBs, they'll jam and mess up the gun. So here on the side now we have the model number SAE39, carbine replica, color blue, because this is kind of a pimp gun inside of this thing. Hologram to prevent some uh, copyright infringement slash counterfeit items. And then the barcode, made in China. Oh, importer from Poland. Oh, maybe that gunfire is from Poland that channel anyways it actually meets electrical compliance CE rose all right and then the big selling point here is on the back we'll have to go over this quickly get a little closer on some of these all right so there's a flat hop here this is the rotary hop-up chamber a 6.03 inner barrel they have a branded gearbox called Orion of their own here. And we've got some reinforced gearbox shells. They all say that. Steel tooth rack. I've seen some where it's half steel, half plastic. 
an aluminum aluminum nozzle with o-ring I've seen some plastic o-ring nozzles out there a full steel gear set an aluminum cylinder head I've seen some plastic cylinder heads and then uh, 8 millimeter ball bearings I've seen 9 millimeters or just bushings and then ESA 2 system inside that's the uh, Specna Arms electronic systems a few outlines of some other models but you might want to just check out their website they have a vast uh, amount of them truthfully I wanted to actually get a shorter uh, rifle but let me show you this one first Another big selling feature here is this thing, the solar trigger. So the electronics board has optical eyes to it to you know, see the trigger moving back and forth. The lower grade guns, they have mechanical switch contacts or you know, kind of like a mouse click button switch. But those eventually wear out, I think, a mechanical switch. But this is an optical switch, so in theory it should never break. That's my, my reasoning. So that was a big selling feature to me. High torque motor, I don't know if that's true or not. So looking at the schematic here, the motor is inside the, the grip itself. There's the electronics board and the optical trigger and all that stuff. This thing comes with two mid-cap magazines, each of which, well, it doesn't say. All right, now inside of this thing, Gate Aster. This is some brand that makes electronic systems for airsoft guns. And this thing can have 250 possible trigger sensitivity settings. Again, because it's optical, it's not mechanical. Kind of like a gaming mouse, you know, how you can reprogram them. And then this is a huge selling feature for me called the ESA 2 Easy Spring Access System. So you can remove in the spring, which adjusts the, uh, the speed of the bullets coming out, BBs coming out and so if you play indoor ranges they tend to have lower speed settings like the range i went to 350 feet per second is the maximum you can shoot inside that range because if you're going to shoot faster you're going to cause even more you know blood blood welts on other people outdoor ranges tend to i guess shoot higher uh rates because they're shooting further but obviously your local range will tell you what you can shoot at so anyways, it tells you, you know, you unscrew something and no tools necessary to change the, the speed of the gun or the spring and then the speed of the gun. All right, so that's the outside and it's pretty effective, you know, product packaging slash marketing on uh, Spectre Arms Point. You know, that's that helps sell someone without a salesperson. Uh, but where I bought this here, you know, there's a salesperson and they let me look at all a bunch of different guns. They had other brands like ENC, G&G, &G, but they don't have these quick spring change systems, not as easy as this, and they don't have electrical optical eye triggers. That's why I skipped those brands, although I hear good things about them. Okay, so I already tore the box, my bad. We have some nice foam, some dense, dense foam there. All right, so here's a quality control certificate, an inspection certificate. So they ran uh, five rounds and they're chronographing them. So 380, 380 around 380 feet per second. So that's actually, that's actually too fast for my indoor field. An outdoor field probably wouldn't be a problem. Uh, the serial number and the actual model number. And then there's a hologram here saying that's legit. And they're shooting uh, I guess the standard 0.2 uh, gram BBs and I guess they must have a temperature controlled room alright so that's kind of nice you know let's see here these look like this looks like a sticker sheet yeah so I'm not sure why I have this on board it's a sticker of a mag this I guess well I guess I'll put them on my toolbox yeah, it's a sticker sheet. This is a quick troubleshooting card for the electronics control system. So programming it and or there are LEDs inside of here that will tell you if there are any problems and possibly what to do. So that could be handy to keep in your wallet or your gear bag. All right, user manual website all 
All right, so we have the components themselves. It's good to actually understand the terminology of a rifle. I had an M1 Garand with a polymer stock, like a real one, but it surely didn't look like this, you know? Uh, so, like it wouldn't have a delta ring, for instance. But this one doesn't either, it's more modern. All right, I'll have to read that myself later. Uh, you could read through the spring change, but uh, after watching those other YouTube channels, you don't need to really read this in my opinion. Just those four photos explains it perfectly fine. The four, four diagrams. All right, front handguard battery holder. This one has a rear battery in the stock, so we'll add a battery later. The adjustment of the stock, how to use the hop-up system. So to my understanding, the hop up, you can change the, uh, you know, the amount it literally hops the ball up. Like it literally creates friction on the ball. And as it leaves, it has a counter, counter spin, like a golf ball, to help it literally hop up in the air, I guess. And so you can adjust how much of that back spin there is. And so the balls will actually literally start flying upwards out of the barrel. Or you can adjust it down to try to get it to be a flat trajectory, which is ideal but it depends on the weight of the BBs and the distance you're shooting and then also how windy it is. So it's nice that this is a, you know, a quick way to uh, adjust that trajectory. All right, you open the, all right. Oh, there we go. There's a diagram explaining what I just verbally said. Installing the batteries, straightforward. Some troubleshooting stuff here. Uh, more troubleshooting stuff here and someone I wouldn't run or run into. Okay, so what else do we have here? Some silica gel. This is a uh, battery connector adapter. This is the small Tamiya connector. This is an outdated uh, connector, like the kind of stuff I saw as a kid myself. They had a bigger size as well as a kid. And then this is a Dean's connector or a T-plug as it's, you know, shaped. Uh, this is just a friction fit, whereas the Tamiya literally has a physical lock, but the Tamiya is just bigger. So space is a concern. Also, I don't think Tamiya can run as much current. There's not enough metal there. Whereas Dean's, look how thick those contacts are. You can run a much higher amperage through a Dean's connector. Although truthfully, uh, I think this industry should go to XT30. You know, learn from the RC car industry. XT30 runs 30 amps. I don't think Dean's runs 30 amps, but I could be wrong. Please correct me if so. We have two magazines here. So that's nice. Uh, when I rented my gun yesterday, they just had one magazine and it failed to feed BBs. The store I went to, you know, test fired it for me, so there's still a BB in there. These are plastic polymer. I can actually squeeze it a little bit. I don't think that affects performance. I believe you can remove this base plate. Yeah, there's a there's a hex hex screw there. But I don't know if I can actually replace the spring inside of this and, and maintain it. Please leave a comment if you know. Alright. Let's see here. Some sort of catalog maybe? It literally says catalog on it. No, it's it's not a book either, it's a giant poster. All right, so this is kind of interesting. Let's take a look. So, a giant poster of some guy I don't want to run into. And then, a, wrist, a poster of the other models that they have in this series, I guess. Some of these are actually licensed. Let me focus again. Rock River Arms, that's a licensing. Not a fan of that style. This is what I really wanted, something like this. Super short, because I intend to play close quarters combat. Uh, outdoor mill sims, I'm gonna guess, are a lot slower paced because you're covering much more territory and so p people just aren't forced to be in close contact with each other. But really cool. I thought about a PDW, but uh, what I learned is a lot of the battery compartments are really small, so that's why I skipped over it. Although all these being M4 platforms, you can change out 
the stocks, the grips, the mags, and the fore end, you know, handguard areas pretty easily. Just change the barrels easily. I also have researched that the barrel length doesn't matter a great deal, especially in CQB. Maybe a large field, it, it helps a little bit. It's more about BB weight and uh, that affects the long distance accuracy. All right, some more marketing stuff there. Okay. The internals, I'm not gonna open this up, so. All right. What's nice about this brand is they give you a secondary spring. The uh, local shop told me this should allow me to get to a lower speed setting so I can play indoors with this thing. It just says M90. I don't know what that 90 means. If that means 90 grams of uh, force. I don't know. Please leave a comment. But I, my little research on springs tells me they come in numbers like M80, M190, 100, 110, 120, 140. But it's, obviously it's related to the tension of the spring. The harder the spring, the faster the bullet. The softer, the slower the bullet. Anything else? Oh, okay. Seems to be a foregrip here. This is an m -lock standard. Alright. I guess uh, a barrel cleaner. Yeah, it's over here. So it's nice, you don't have to buy a barrel cleaner. This little slot means you put in a little piece of cloth fabric and you run it down with some oil down the barrel and then that cleans out any gunk and stuff. So it's nice that you don't have to buy one. And this is plastic so it won't scratch up the inside of your barrel. Uh, real gun cleaners tend to be brass or possibly aluminum rods, but I think the inside barrel of this is aluminum, so you don't want to scratch aluminum with aluminum. Henceforth, this is made of plastic. It's very long, probably for longer barrels. I'm going to have to assume this box here is meant for all their rifles, because literally this is a lot longer than it needs to be. Alright. So, black on black is a little hard to see, so let me get rid of this box now. Let's make sure there's nothing else in here. When I said pimp gun, yeah, this is kind of pimpish. They have a red version as well of this particular one. And the reason why I chose not red is because yesterday, the indoor field I was playing at makes you wear armbands. They split the teams into yellow armbands and red armbands. So being a new person, not so attentive, I shot one of my teammates because my teammate had a red gun. <laughs> right? I was wearing a yellow armband. We're the yellow team, but the guy had a red gun, so I shot him. I apologized, of course, to the person. But anyways, I went with blue so that doesn't happen to me. Keep that in mind if you're new. Think, try go go to a place, rent your equipment, see if you even like the sport first and then decide you know what colors or figure out what colors they use and try not to have that on your gun because someone's going to mistake you just like I, a moron like I, I did okay hmm. all right so quick the stock here I think this is called a crane stock for my my research one two three four probably five actual positions this is a spring there obviously you can hear all right while we're here at the stock. There's two uh, pushing tabs here. Sadly it's black, it's hard to see. But if I squeeze those and push this out, that removes the rubber, rubber back plate. There's plastic inside the middle here, but the outside is rubbery. And then there's a little hook here keeping the top in place. So then there's this plastic cover. I feel this is, well, I guess it's necessary. I feel it's uh, weird to have this though. I kind of wish that this, these two things are joined together, you know, molded in a way where this is all one piece. All right. But anyways, inside the stock here, we have the uh, chambers. Hmm. Let me 
readjust the angle here. So the the tube here, the rear tube slides in here, but you have two extra things here. So eventually I'll probably get a, a three cell pack so it can have more capacity and just have one cell in each of these openings. All right, there is a hole up here. I don't know why. Please leave a comment. So this is all nylon plastic back here, but this here is metal. I'm gonna assume it's aluminum, but uh, let me put this back. Well, you know, we'll, we'll put a battery in it later though. So if, right now this is as far back as it goes, but if I pull up that front section even further, it, fall, it comes off. All right, let me get back here. Yeah, this is milled aluminum because this is all one continuous piece of metal here. So that's lightweight. So that's good. Sorry, my tripod is... The feet are very wide. All right, so while we're here, we might as well talk about the quick change spring. This thing comes default with the, the Dean's plug on it. So this lock ring, which is knurled for hand access, that comes undone. I don't know if you, you twist this a few degrees because there's a hex apparently. So make sure you don't tear off your battery lead there. You can get it out of there. It's quite it's quite hollow, right? So now this you can use obviously a pair of pliers, but I think it only needs to be hand tightened. But be careful, there's a spring behind this. So if you don't back it, this thing will probably shoot off and, you know, take your eye out or break something. Getting towards the end. Yeah. Actually, it's not that much force after all. But if you had a, you know, more powerful spring. So this is tapered, so the spring will, you know, compress on it very easily. There's a uh, bushing. Looks like a brass bushing there with two stainless washers so this spins around which allows the spring to spin around freely as well a pretty tight amount of uh, threading there and then it is oiled of course sadly I don't have a chrono chrono chronograph to test the speed of this thing but let's pull out this M90 spring and just compare these two see which has less coils Less coils means less power, or thickness of steel could be the, the way to do it. Or length would be another way. Hmm. It looks like the top one is thicker steel. So the overall length is identical. It's just the thickness of the steel itself. So this is the le uh, weaker spring, which is what the sales guy told me. So I believe this would get me under, hopefully, under 350 feet per second for indoor use. Hmm. All right. So we're going to pop this spring back in. This is steel, by the way. What I don't know is if this is steel. I think it is because it's very thin. I think it's too thin to be aluminum. It's good that both are steel because it'll be very difficult to cross thread this. If one or the other was aluminum or worse, both of them were aluminum, you might strip the thread to cross thread it very easily. So although heavier, I think for longevity is better. So I'm, I'm, that's barely tight. There's no way that's gonna back out with that many threads. All right. I am seeing this groove right here and then I'm seeing a tooth right here. And then there's also the groove here. So on this side, yeah, there's two, two teeth. Yeah, all right. This is aluminum, this little uh, sling, sling point. And there's also teeth behind it and grooves in it. So I could probably flip that over if I want, but then I'd block the charging handle. Oh, my, my cat is paying a visit.
Oh, I see. Also, now I'm noticing the battery cables coming out the bottom. So that's also why you want to have all this open stuff here on the bottom, is to clear the battery cable. All right. So yeah, as long as that opening is on the bottom, you slide it on, you twist it a few degrees, now this is vertical. So now you can tighten this back down, this collar. Just twisting it back, make sure it's vertical. I suppose if you had a proper tool, you could actually tighten this further, but uh, I'll have to see how well it works without that. So what is going on here? I don't know if... Hmm. These don't seem to move. Okay. There's a metal insert here. This is where quick quick didn't disconnect uh what am I looking for? Sling. A metal quick dis disconnect that attaches to a sling. And this is metal as well, this piece here. And there's a little grub screw keeping that in place. So I got it. There we go. Okay, so that's the back end and the quick spring change. It was pretty quick, no tools necessary. That's what sold me on it. I'm a lazy person. All right, safe. Semi or pull once, shoot once, and then full auto. The, the clicking into safe has a positive sound and noise to it. Semi and auto less so. You can feel a small detent, it's just not as obvious as safe mode. Even though this is accurate to an M4 or an AR-15, I feel like a 180, 180 switch is too long. I think 90 degrees would be better, you know, like safe, semi, auto, it feels like that. But I guess they're sticking to the M4 system. So this trigger seems to be a aluminum probably ca cast aluminum it's got some uh, ridging in there and then a little lip to keep your finger from falling off not that it could go really anywhere because it has this in, in the way I'm gonna guess this pin can be pushed out and you can remove this if you want to pull a really long trigger on there All right. so the motor is inside this grip but actually let me go out of this grip there's some texturing here. I think it's like, I saw in another video, the texturing literally is the SA logo, just overlapping. So you, I'm squeezing these two things inwards. All right, there's a hex key there, but this thing is loose. Just, so I'm not sure why there's a hex key there. Oh, I see. This thing can be screwed in further, this little black thing, to push the motor up into the, the gearbox or reduce the tension. So you can adjust the, the mesh of the gearing. And then this little thing is spacing it, so it's pushing the motor back so the motor is in line with the, the gearing. Hopefully that doesn't need to be adjusted. Yeah, so can see it moving in and out because the motor is just loose I guess but once this snaps tight that's a little skeptical I'll be honest with you since this whole thing is plastic here if these little teeth on this uh, plate wear down you know it might be hard for this to stay closed and actually keep that motor where it belongs so I would recommend you don't open this as very often, only when you need to. Hmm. See, it also doesn't seem like those teeth are fully engaged into the slot, but maybe it's okay. No, maybe it's not. See, I don't think this side is, there we go. So you, you wanna see a gap there. Without a gap, that means the teeth aren't engaging 
and this thing will open your motor will just start falling falling out well the cables will probably keep it in place but it's just not good a good idea what is nice though is you can actually put an allen key down in there and adjust the motor tension without opening this so that would probably be the smarter thing to do i think it's the only way to do it anyways okay i'm going to assume you can replace this entire grip as well all right some nice engraving here so this is a metal aluminum lower receiver and a aluminum upper receiver and then this whole foregrip is also aluminum uh, so the only things that are plastic are the, the stock itself and the grip and then the sights are plastic as well but everything else wait a second it's possible this is plastic mm, no I think this is metal I'm not sure if it's aluminum or steel though. I'll have to take it off and weigh it. All right. So this is a hex hex bolt here. And then this is preventing the end of it from spinning. But uh, I guess you can remove that to remove the upper. The pin here can be removed, I assume, to remove the upper. It's not ambidextrous. The safety is only on for a right-handed person or a right thumb person so lefties not not for you the uh, forward assist does push in I don't know if it's functional this is not an ambidextrous uh, talking lever it did open this door the ejection port so yeah I mean this it's not functional it's not a real rifle but it's quite interesting that uh, this thing is blue on the inside to match everything oh it's blue on the outside also never mind this can be removed this sort of lock although I'm not sure why you would want to do that and then there's a steel pin although I don't know, there's a lot of extra metal sticking out here. I don't know if this should be pushed in further that way. I'll have to mess with it later. Okay. There's two screws holding the uh, front end on. They're hexes as well. Looking like a M3 maybe. Let's go to this rear sight. Okay, so that nice easy access there. pretty cool nice and easy uh, let's see about in here get these fold down oh I see there's, there's a screw here one adjustment so probably left right adjustment what I'm trying to figure out is why are there two pieces there's literally two pieces stacked on top of each other yeah, I can't figure that out yet. Might be hard to see because this thing is black. There's a peephole in one and the other one is bigger, I see. But okay, there it is. Just took a little force. So it's a pretty big rear right now. Let me hold on. Let me change the angle here. Yeah, see the aperture is quite large. But if I flip the other one up, now the aperture is much smaller. So that's an interesting option to go from a large to a small aperture. That's nice and nice to have. And you could probably remove, since there's a flathead screw here, you could probably undo this and just remove the front one so it's only a small aperture if you wanted to. Although I don't know if that would adjust, affect the angle of the aperture without the plate here. Don't know. All right. So what's kind of weird is this is a flat head and this is the rest of it so far has been hex heads. Like even mounting this has a hex. 
So it would have been nice if this was a hex also. Now you got to carry around two, two different tools. All right, the front one seems to be the same. Same opening feature. Nice and big, left or right, ambidextrous, really. And then there's just a, there's a pin. You know, just a cylindrical pin for the front sight. Um, it looks like it can come out though. And it looks like it can be rotated 90 degrees. There's a, uh, I can't tell if it can see it. But you see, there's slots and there's one tooth holding it in on that side. The other slots are empty. So I'm going to guess you can remove this and twist it 90 degrees. Although the actual shape of it, I can't tell if that would make any difference. You know, I don't think it would make a difference. If this thing was shaped in a different asymmetric way, I could understand twisting it 90 degrees to change the, the sight. But I don't see it happening. But correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you can adjust the height of it as well. That might be the reason. All right. This is really hard to do. Um, I have a mobile phone and a tripod in front of me. I'm trying to have the camera look down the site. I don't think it can happen. Well, well, maybe it can happen. Maybe, hold on. I think I can make this happen. Yeah, there you go. That's a small aperture. Let me get the front one down. And there's the big aperture. So there's a big difference right there. I'm holding this roughly uh, the distance away. My cheek is literally on the uh, the butt. So well, not the butt. It's on the uh, stock. Sorry, I'm trying to, trying to align this. Anyways, it makes a big difference. This this plate, obviously. You know, for long distance, maybe that would make sense. But for more closer quarters. You know, you have easy, easier access here. So that's, that's a really cool thing. I have ordered a scope online, but coming from AliExpress, it might take two months for, for that to show up. So don't know, because this, I'm just going to play with these sights for now. All right. It's a nice uh, laser etched logo here. So I don't know what this is. Please leave a comment. I'm assuming... This is a logo of a company making real barrel shrouds for real firearms. But I, I don't know what this brand is. It would be nice to know. Please leave a comment. But it's got three M-Lock slots here on the side. One, two, five on the bottom. Yeah, the two clamps there. Maybe that's not equally clamped. I might have to go back with some tools to adjust that. And then, uh, yeah, a full-on... Rail, it's a level rail, you know, the front and the back are matching perfectly, it seems. Only a very tiny gap there. But again, uh, I might be able to adjust the depth, the, the spacing, even for, even better. So that's nice. And then I think this is a counterclockwise thread. So this compensator here. Hmm. I'm assuming this is aluminum. I don't see a reason why a gun of this price range would have a steel one. Hmm. I don't know for sure though. There's a little spacer. Slash. But it's got a recess for an O-ring. So that's probably helping it to keep it from uh, spinning off against its will. The O-ring is trying to expand constantly. So it's keeping pressure on the threads to keep this from falling off. Yeah, so I'm literally I'm twisting it counterclockwise to put it on. So it's against the regular bolts, uh, which are the other th other direction. So I could put like a you know a compensator or a, a tracer silencer kind of thing on there in the future. All right, magazine. So I forget on which channel, Evike or Gunfire, yeah, this magazine, this texture, 
is the Specna Arms. Yeah, okay, I see it there. Hopefully you can see the S and the A just repeated, repeatedly, vertically and horizontally. So that's pretty cool. And then it is in, you know, molded to say Specna Arms and then molded to have the uh, caliber. Don't know what this is. Oh, that probably. Well, I don't know what that would be for. Partially to lock it into the gun. And I have no clue what this is. Oh, I see. That's keeping the balls in the thing. Right, so. Maybe I should take this apart. Hold on. All right, so this is an M3 and it's used for all the larger size bolts we saw on the gun. But on the bottom of this thing is an M2. Uh, so, yeah, two millimeter. So let's see this thing. I'm gonna hold this in case this is a spring that forces this thing out, I don't know. I wish more brands would do clear gun magazines. I'd like to know how much ammo I have left in this thing, but uh, I'll eventually buy the various clear ammo mags to see if they'll fit this thing and how well they operate. So this is all Phillips head screws. You can actually see the outline of where the ammo is running. So I'm not going to bother with that today. I don't want to ruin something I just bought. I'll wait till it jams before I start messing with that. All right. So I guess it would have been easier if I just pushed it out the other way. Oh well. Alright, I'll put that back later. So where's the other mag? Now noticing there's a serial number sticker here. I do feel this is going to fall off pretty easily because it's literally put on top of a surface that has holes and recesses in it. This is kind of neat though, the lightning holes. They're not all fully through. Some of them are halfway cut through, some are fully through there. So I think that's pretty cool. Although the placement of the sticker makes no sense. Although I don't know where else they could have put it. I don't know if it would fit there. Hmm. Yeah. Or maybe a smaller sticker underneath the trigger, maybe? I don't know. Hmm, what's inside? Not sure if you're going to be able to see that because it's so dark in there. But there is a Specna Arm sticker in there with a serial number. Don't remove, it says. Oh, that's the gearbox. Alright, so if there's a warranty... Uh, the shop I bought this from is giving me a two-year warranty. I don't know if that's the shop's warranty or if Specna Arms actually has a warranty. All right, the no no ammo in this. All right, feeds in pretty nice. Very little wobble. Side to side a little bit more than the front to back. Yeah, you can see the side to side wobble, but front to back almost none. Mag release. So, gravity drop. The mag release has a different 
it is a Phillips. So there's a lot of different tools you would need to fully service this thing, which is a shame. It would have been ideal if everything was like just two metric sizes, but this is the mid-range gun from what I understand. All right. Is there a bolt? I got a slide catch here. There's no way to keep this thing in the back position. I'm trying to lift it, push it up, push it down. I don't know what kind of mechanism they could have employed. Uh, so sadly, nothing is locking this cover in place, which makes uh, adjusting the hop up a little more difficult. But if you just use two hands, I guess, you can twist the rotary knob for the hop up, up and down. Okay. All right, last thing is this thing. This is polymer, only piece of, the only piece of metal, well there's two, there's the actual this thing that goes into the gun, and there's two hex bolts here holding the lower. Oh, this is actually hollow. This is rubbery, by the way, right here, what I'm squeezing. Yeah, the whole door is rubbery. And there's, yeah, the central hex there. What did I see? So this is two pieces of plastic, and those, these two screws are holding this top part to the bottom part. Then that one screw in the middle is tightening this into the M-lock rail system. I have no clue what you would wa actually want to try to keep in something so small. Strange. I guess in the real world, it. For a real gun, well, even for a real gun, I don't know, maybe hex bits? Hex bits, probably. Let's try 2.5. It's a 2.5. All right, I think those tabs are now in the, uh, the slots there. Okay, that's, there's a little bit of wiggling room. And because it is polymer, those uh, tabs going into the slots, I do feel eventually that plastic is gonna wear and eventually this will have more and more slack because the tabs aren't metal. But again, for a mid-priced gun, I, I think it's acceptable. And the main issue, I guess, is really the amount of grip. I don't know if I'll get to like this or not. You know, this might be tiring on my pinky finger if I always have the pinky finger holding the weight. Although uh, the weight's supposed to be held by the top of the hand here. I don't know. I'll have to come back and let you guys know. Or I might just literally buy a new grip. Even, but really, maybe just hold it without the grip. Okay, so I read the instruction manual. There wasn't much to it other than the fact that the hop-up I learned that if you twist it downwards or towards you, that actually increases the hop up or the ball will actually fly upwards. And then pushing it away from you or upwards, that'll, you know, decrease it. So I, I put a little sticker on the, the bolt to, to remind me of that. Um, another note, the little screw that was inside this, I stripped out the head already. So I changed it over to a 3 millimeter uh, long bolt of the standard uh, socket type cap like this style instead of the little chamfer head. So that should hopefully be a little bit more reliable with more traction in the, the bolt head. I have some of uh, these 25 BBs from uh, my first game. So we're going to just do a test firing. I fully charged this battery with my uh, RC smart charger and always you know, charge inside of a lipo bag in case it catches on fire. It's, a, you know, not common, but better safe than burning your place down. And then I got cheap one of these cheap BB loaders as well. I have a rotary loader in the mail somewhere now, but... So, we're just going to load this guy and see how easy it is to load with this cheap loader. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a new magazine, so 
Makes sense. This is a shooting target box I was using for slingshots, but I'm just going to use this to start testing. I'm going to eventually add a paper clip here, and then I'll hang a paper target here to test the accuracy. But for now, we're just going to shoot this silicone rubber thing here. And uh, just a few tips for you guys. I have a bunch of cut up cloths, which help muffle the sound. And then behind it, because I'm slingshotting, I have a mosquito net. So just a tip for you guys. Mesh is the very best way to muffle sound. This mosquito net has almost no sound when I hit it with a slingshot ball. Versus the t-shirts do make some noise. And then this curtain here makes a lot of noise. And then this box actually makes the most noise because it's under tension. In fact, it's I've started breaking it. I was shooting some silicone balls at this with my slingshots. All right, so let's plug this guy in. You'll have to excuse the mess. I'm not uh, taking the time to clean my apartment just to shoot a casual video on my first airsoft experience here. All right, so. Slide this battery in here. We have an 1100, 11.1 volt, 25C, no, 15C. Hopefully that's, well, I guess that's okay. And then it came with the Dean's plug already. So that's nice. Make sure it's unsafe. It is not unsafe. So, it seems to be a decent amount of extra room to jam the connectors and cables up in here. So that's nice. And this little two-piece two stock thing here. This is really fidgety, this piece. I'm not a big fan of this, but I'm not sh Well, I don't know of a better stock yet. I do plan to probably swap this out one day if I can find a better easier to use stock that can fit a bigger battery 1100 shots I don't know I don't think I'd, I'd rather carry a bigger battery alright so you'll see here I'm having a hard time pushing this in put that connector right over here so I put the connector in the little side section. Let's see if that helps. Not much. I don't know. This is not the... <sighs> that didn't help either. So there's something holding this up. It's weird. Alright, so pulling out the stock helped out. So this guy has a little tooth here that slides up in this groove first, and then the two snaps on the bottom. All right, wearing safety protection, of course. Okay, guys, I already did a few test shots, and I already made one improvement. Uh, that being the front sight, you know, is totally black, so uh, it was really hard to see the front sight. So I just put some yellow paint on it. And, you know, it's perfectly fine. No one would ever see that anyways. Uh, so that helps out. And I'm noticing here the, the sights themselves. If I shoot through this very large opening here and then try to have the, the sight line up with the target, meaning the top plane of the front sight line up with the target, I'll show you what happens here. It shoots low. So even if I hop it up all the way, which I'll do right now. So I'm gonna rotate this downwards all the way. Okay, so that's maxed out on the upward elevation of the uh, hopping. Let's try it again. It's shooting low still. So, the next thing I'm going to show is there's a little slot here. Hopefully you can tell, I'm losing focus, sorry. There's a little slot at the top of this thing. So I'm going to line up the slot with the uh, yellow front marker here. And then we'll see what happens with the height. So now, it's shooting high. So now I'm going to try 
lifting this second small aperture thing, I will. Well, that won't make a difference for the bottom one because it's just smaller, a smaller hole with the same height. But the the second sight thing also has a groove, which is taller than the first sight. So now I'm going to use this very highest groove here to line up with the front sight. Keeping both eyes open, by the way. Oh, there you go. So that's pretty much spot on. I just hit the target two out of three shots. So if you use this with just the stock sights like I'm doing right now, I recommend you use, you know, these things flipped up all the way, both of them, and line up the front sight with that groove, the very highest groove. All right, do it again. Okay, let's do full auto here. Alright, so put it on safe mode. Alright, so this is fantastic. Uh, I want to give a thanks out to all the different YouTube channels for helping me make this purchasing decision. Uh, Gunfire again for doing all the reviews on all these different Specna arms. And then Evike just does a lot of different brands as well, including some of the Specna arms. I'm going to have some modifications later on. As, uh, as interesting as this pimp blue color scheme is, I think this blue barrel is going to give me away too easily. So I'm either going to spray paint, well not spray paint this, I'm going to airbrush paint black over this or a camo pattern. Because uh, if I use an acrylic based paint, which I'll show you right here, hold on. I use this brand here for other hobbies. It's called Vallejo. Vallejo is a water-based acrylic. So uh, with water-based paint, it doesn't really want to stick on as much as uh, a paint with a, an alcohol carrier or some other solvent. And so I know that if I wanted to, I could always use alcohol to strip off that Vallejo paint later if I want to go back to this blue. Or I might just buy some black heat shrink tubing and just put some black heat shrink over it. But I think it would be cooler if I painted a camo pattern. Maybe I'll even do a video on that. I don't know if I can actually put paint or tape in here because I have a suspicion this might be a really tight friction fit. I don't know. I'm not going to... I haven't opened this thing up. So we'll, we'll have to see about that. One other note I want to mention is to the end grip here or the rail system here. You'll notice here that it tapers off wider in the front. So this is really nice ergonomically without gloves because there's like a thumb, thumb ramp here. So that's really nice. Naturally, I'm gonna wear gloves when I play, so having rails on the side wouldn't matter as much, but I really like the fit of this right now. Um, and then, you know, using the forearm grip, uh, it's okay in this tight position, uh, but I think I kinda like using this position right now. Or, for CQB, I think I'm going to actually hold it right here against the magwell. And I've ordered one of those ergonomic plastic grips to go here, and we'll see how that works out. Another thing I'm pretty sure I will do is I'm going to switch to a 4-inch barrel so I can make this as short of a stubby rifle as possible. I basically just want a high-powered pistol, right, so I can maneuver it easier. I don't think for CQB, barrel length matters. Many people are saying it doesn't really matter in most instances because there's no rifling in a BB system. Without rifling, barrel length doesn't ma matter so much. You know, maybe it'll be slightly longer distance or you can shoot. Well, anyways, that's a different topic. Okay, I'm rambling on now, so uh, I guess the next video will be me testing out some .2 ammo, which I bought uh, three different brands of, and I'll put some paper up there, and I'm going to put this into a, the vice grip you know, and uh, keep the rifle from moving, no human error. And we'll see what kind of BBs, 0.2 BBs, shoot best out of this thing. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Take care and stay safe. Wear safety goggles or glasses. Bye.